Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, webinar Wednesday. Uh, the title of this webinar is uh, Your Data Safe in the Cloud. Uh, my name is David Fox from JPY in the UK and our special guest today is Whit Jackman, uh, Vice President of Media Entertainment over at Wasabi, San Francisco. Hi Whit. Hello David. I'm hoping everybody can hear me okay. If anybody's got any uh, technical issues that they want to make us aware of, please feel free to write something in the chat in the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, just before we kick off, we still have a few people joining, so I'll just waffle for a few seconds. Um, we are going to be about 30 to 35 minutes, I'm anticipating. Uh, the last five minutes or so we'll reserve for Q&A once, once myself and Wit have told you all about the product and the, and the, and the cloud services. Um, so if anybody's got any questions, please add them to the questions section in the GoToWebinar interface, and then I'll run through everything that I can find in there at the end. Uh, so without any further ado, this is the first slide, which we can now pass over. So moving on. So today we're going to be talking about backup and archive to cloud services. And uh, although a lot of you are probably already familiar with ArcuWare P5 Backup and P5 Archive, I'll just say a little bit about what those products do uh, and kind of focus a little bit on the differences between backup and archive. So um, sorry to be insulting anybody's intelligence. I'm sure you all already know what a backup is, but I'll tell you anyway, uh, a backup is a copy of your data. So you're taking the data that exists and making a copy of it. You're doing that so that you can survive a disaster. So that's called disaster recovery. Disaster could be a failure of a failure of hardware products or software. It could be a, a flood or something terrible like that. Backups normally run on a daily schedule. So you don't have to think about it every day. The backup is going to do what it needs to do for you. And the, uh, the P5 backup product features automatic storage management, which becomes more interesting, important when we're looking at the cloud storage. Uh, in the case of traditional tape, that means that we can control a tape library. We can move the tapes around and be, a, be aware of what's on every tape and which tapes you've got. So that's what we mean by storage management in the traditional sense. Um, with a backup, you'll generally configure the amount of retention of data in terms of how many weeks or months of data you want to retain in that backup. But ultimately, you don't retain forever with a backup, generally. So at some point, data that's maybe more than a year old or six months old, you're going to be throwing that away and not retaining it. Um, and obviously, an off-site backup is essential because if you have a problem with your site, like the flood that I mentioned earlier, then obviously you need to be able to go outside of that site to recover your data and restore it back to whatever you're replacing the broken hardware with. So hold all of that in your mind while we just talk about archive to just be aware of the differences. So archive is not a copy, but it's more about moving or migrating data so that you can keep it long term. So you're going to take data away from your live uh, primary storage and put it into an offline location with archive so that you can have that data available in the future without it using up valuable space. So it's not there for disaster recovery. You're not saving all of your data in a backup. You're just choosing certain maybe completed pieces of work to archive when, when you know that it's safe to archive them. Um, you can daily schedule an archive and have like a hot folder mechanism where you put stuff in a, in a particular folder and it gets archived every day. Or you can do it on an ad hoc basis so that you're archiving what you need to archive when you want to archive it. And P5 Archive allows you to do that via a web interface. Um, again, we share the automatic storage management in the case of tape libraries that I mentioned earlier. And with an archive, you'll generally plan on retaining the data indefinitely. You never know when you might need something that you've put in your archive. So we don't plan on ever uh, removing data from places that you've archived to. It stays there. Uh, and again, just as important as a backup, your, off, your, your archive data needs to be also stored off-site, maybe in addition to an on-site storage of data. So uh, let's just look a little bit into how we manage storage in the traditional sense so that we can kind of map that onto how P5 copes with cloud storage without changing the way that you work with it too much. Um, 
With both P5 and backup, P5 backup, we have the concept of a storage pool, which is what you can see over on the right hand side. And typically we'll have separate pools for backing up and for archiving too, because your backup data is going to be uh, removed uh, over some period of time and that storage will be recycled along with the retention uh, period that we alluded to earlier. Whereas archived storage has to be separated because you're going to keep that storage forever. And if you were doing a traditional backup and archive to tape, then your storage pool would consist of a bunch of LTO tapes. There's nine there in the diagram, but basically you can have as many tapes in a, in a storage pool as you need to accommodate the data. So there's your tape library on the left hand side and you'll just basically add tapes to the pools to accommodate the size of the backup or your archive, which is just growing through time. And P5 can also use disk storage. So uh, just as with tape, with, uh, with disk, the storage pool, instead of containing uh, what we call volumes, which in, which a volume is a tape with when using tape. With disk, a volume is a folder on a disk, and each of those folders contains a number of what we call chunks, which basically total up the, the total data that's been stored on that particular volume. So a volume can either be a tape or it can be a folder on disk. So if you're using cloud storage, we take the folders on disk and we take a cloud provider uh, which is generally referred to as a bucket. And then we take each of those folders, those volumes, and we copy those into the cloud provider. And we can do one of two things when we're using cloud. We can either copy them to the cloud, in which case you have the local copy on disk on the left-hand side and the remote cloud copy on the right-hand side, or we can move it to the cloud, in which case we'll always need to go to the cloud to restore something. And the amount of local disk storage you need is going to be fairly minimal, just like a cache for the intermediate storage whilst it's being archived up to the cloud or backed up. And um, so, oh, I've got some animation here. So what I'm saying here is there's a tick. Once we've copied it up, we could delete the local copy. Excuse me, I forgot what I've done in my slides. So um, we have a broad uh, vendor support for cloud services. So um, we have Backblaze, Amazon S3, Wasabi, Alibaba, which is a kind of AWS from, from China. Uh, Microsoft Azure, and we have generic S3 support. So that means that there are many other uh, cloud storage providers who we support through S3 generic support. One of those is Wasabi. So Wasabi present their cloud storage using the same protocol that Amazon used for S3. This has become a fairly open standard and there's kind of a lot of people are kind of moving to that as a standard for accessing cloud object storage. And we'll be focusing around Wasabi in a couple of minutes, obviously, because we have Wit here uh, and talking about that. So in terms of the, um, the, the possibilities in our GUI where you're using a web interface, you can see that you can choose the cloud provider from uh, one of those there, and there are more being added over time. And in the case of using uh, Wasabi storage, uh, this is a screenshot of an actual configuration that I'll show you in a sec, uh, where we have a bunch of uh, image assets that have been archived into some Wasabi storage. So the setup for the uh, storage is pretty simple. Um, we, this is all documented and stuff that I can pass on to anybody that's interested. So um, within P5's GUI, when you are archiving or backing up, you're going to be writing to volumes. So the, this window on the left hand side shows you 10 volumes configured within P5. And anybody already using P5 will be will be familiar with that view. You'll see the, the disk icons down the left hand side for each one of these volumes has a little cloud icon on it, which basically links up to the fact that on the right hand side, we're looking at the Wasabi web console. These are just, there are lots of reasons why you might use cloud or might not use cloud. So I've got some pros and cons here. Um, so let's just run through them quickly and maybe we can we can just talk a little bit around some of these at the same time. Um, so mm -hmm. obviously cloud storage means that there's no hardware for you to set up, which is obviously a big deal. If you're looking to buy tape hardware, tape library and so on, that's quite a big capital expense. Whereas with cloud storage, you can start using that straight away. Um, physical and uh, physical data security in terms of data centers and data security in terms of replication and redundancy and the kind of arrays of redundant disks that can be used by commercial services generally far exceed what you can build yourself diy do it yourself um, so by pumping your data out to a to a commercial provider you're 
likely to get more reliability than you can than you can do yourself by buying a RAID 5 array or whatever. The the capacity of cloud is obviously infinite. You pay the money and you get the storage that you need. Uh, cloud is always off-site. There's no need to be thinking about taking tapes in a car to another location. Um, and the cost can be uh, a significant benefit with cloud storage when you weigh up the fact that there's no capital hardware expense for you to take care of. So those are my, my, my pros. And uh, the cons that I'm thinking of really are bandwidth versus local disks and tapes where you're kind of limited by the speed of your internet connection. So you're not going to be able to consider uploading to cloud storage unless you've got decent uh, internet bandwidth. Um, the cost for larger data sets can start to become a factor, a negative factor when you start to look at the uh, the cost of the storage. But that's another interesting thing we can talk about with Wasabi and the cost versus the competition. And um, accessibility, obviously you've got to have an internet connection to get data back, unless you're keeping that local copy that we, would, that we talked about. And you might just have concerns about security by leaving your data in the hands of a third party. Are you, do you feel entirely safe with that? So um, is there anything else that you think we should be adding to that, that list, Wit, just to bring you in there at that point? Thank you. Uh, this is Whit Jackson. I'm Vice President of Media and Entertainment for Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage. Okay, well, let's go to a little uh, Wasabi background, uh, David, and then you know maybe at the end we can do a quick demo again because uh, I always yeah. enjoy seeing. Sure. Myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, again, a little background on Wasabi. Um, we are a relatively newer player in cloud storage, but we come from a very long history of providing cloud storage services. The two founders of Wasabi, David Friend and Jeff Flowers, um, were also the same two that launched the company Carbonite back in 2005. And Carbonite was one of the very first cloud data backup services. Uh, very successful company, publicly traded on the NASDAQ in the US, uh, now protecting files for over 2 million customers and over 700 billion files in storage. And what Wasabi really represents is that uh, uh, founding team, uh, the core developers saying, if we were to start all over again with our 15 years of experience, take advantage of the latest technology, how would we go about doing that? And that results in Wasabi. So our product is cloud object storage as a service. Uh, some of the comparables in the industry would be uh, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and the Google Cloud Platform Storage Service. Um, the Wasabi service officially launched in May of 2017. We have over 6,000 customers today and 1.5 billion objects in storage. And our mission is to deliver the fastest cloud storage at very simple and easy to understand utility pricing. And we like to think of this as cloud 2.0. Uh, next slide, please. Taking a look at uh, where we're deployed today, Wasabi operates currently in three data centers. Uh, we recently opened our first European data center in Amsterdam. Um, in the United States, we have a facility in Ashburn, Virginia on the East Coast and on the West Coast, uh, one in Hillsboro, Oregon. Um, the Hillsboro, Oregon facility does have a direct connect uh, down to Los Angeles to the core site LA1 co-location facility. And uh, David, if you click the button again, I think an animation might kick in. And uh, the, the LA1 facility, or otherwise known as One Wilshire, is, is very highly connected interconnect point, and most of the Hollywood studios and major post-production houses are connected into that facility. So very easy to get up to Wasabi in Oregon with a fast connection. And then, David, if you click one more time, I think I'll bring up some of the other interconnect partners that we have that include Megaport, Equinix, and Limelight. With those three companies, they provide us over a couple hundred points of presence around the globe. Uh, if you can connect into one of the Megaport facilities, you can get to Wasabi as an example. We're also members of the Internet2 Consortium, uh, which is a private network linking over 400 universities and research facilities in the United States, very high-speed network. And then lastly, you can also get to Wasabi over AWS Direct Connect. So for instance, if you run compute uh, on EC2, uh, let's say in the Oregon region, uh, you can use Direct Connect to get a high-speed connection into the Wasabi data center. 
Cool. Okay. Like, and well, I remember you. I think you mentioned yesterday, Wit, that you can actually get higher speed potentially writing to the Wasabi object storage than you can writing to Amazon's own S3 storage. Yeah, that, that's true, David. So um, I think I've got a little bit of information coming up on that a little bit down the road, and we'll get into that a little deeper. Um, it, you know, this kind of leads us into that, that our value proposition is built on three pillars, uh, the first being protection, uh, the second being performance, um, the third one being price. And why don't we move along and we'll get uh, to a little more uh, information on each of these. And, and first, let's take a look at, uh, dive a little bit deeper into the product protection subject. Um, is cloud a still somewhat a new environment for storage uh, of media uh, and other assets? And you know, for only the media and entertainment industry and other industries, there is some misperception that your media is less secure in the cloud. Um, but like anything in life, uh, it really comes down to implementation. And in fact, the cloud can offer a number of security advantages over on-premise media storage. Uh, Wasabi uses top tier four data centers, um, which are facilities that are built for extreme security and redundancy. Um, all these facilities come with extreme you know, monitoring and security protocol. We'll get a little deeper into that as we go forward here. Um, that we have continuous monitoring and maintenance built into the Wasabi storage service that takes the burden off the end user customer using identity and access management policies It enables very granular management of users, uh, user groups and the permissions to allow or deny access to stored data. Um, the advanced replication models that cloud storage providers put into their services provide uh, typically higher levels of data durability that you're going to get with any on-premise storage uh, environments. And then also, if you consolidate storage in the cloud, it really can improve security over typical production workflows we see today. And if you consider uh, the creation of a major motion picture or episodic television content, you know, we see all this, uh, this kind of activity all the time in, in, in Los Angeles, where there's number of point to point transfers of media files going back and forth between vendors, multiple copies of files that are floating around. Um, in many cases, hard drives that are unencrypted might be shuttled back and forth between facilities. And certainly there's a healthy courier service going on in Los Angeles carrying these this type of media all the time. And then, you know, at the end of a project, you're really relying on your partners to delete their files uh, when they're supposed to. Uh, next slide, please, David. Yep. So now looking a bit more at uh, Wasabi protection specifically, as I mentioned uh, for physical security, we're in the top tier four data centers, highly secure and fully redundant. These are all certified for SOC 2 and ISO 27001 compliance. Um, we have a very secure network architecture, leveraging firewalls and other boundary protection devices to control communications in and out of Wasabi. Uh, next one, please. And uh, as we look then at David privacy and security, um, access control lists and IAM policies grant the read write uh, and the administrative permissions to get access to data. In Wasabi, all data items that come in are encrypted using AES 256. Um, and we do integrity checking on the data every 90 days, looking for any sort of corruption or bit rot that might happen. All communications in and out of Wasabi are protected using HTTPS. And if we get now down to the data durability and the protection, um, we use a version of erasure coding where a data item that comes into Wasabi is written over 20 disk drives. But we can fully reconstruct that data object using any 16 of the 20 drives. So when you calculate this out, uh, the durability we provide, you get to the 11 nines of data durability, which is the highest standards that folks like uh, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, we all aspire to. And if you try to put this into practical terms, which is very hard to do, if you store 10,000 objects in Wasabi, you're gonna lose one object about every 10 million years. And then we also have a data immutability feature that is selectable by the user um, that uh, where a user can select for an object, for a bucket to be immutable, which means it can't be deleted by the user, it can't be deleted by Wasabi or anybody. And this protects against the most common types of data loss, which are accidental file deletions, viruses and ransomware, 
or you know malicious activity. Uh, next, please. We also offer a cross-region replication facility where if you're storing, for instance, in Amsterdam with Wasabi, you can select to have your data there replicated to another Wasabi facility. Um, you, as a user, you would pay for the additional storage capacity that you use, but Wasabi pays the networking charges between our data centers. And then I think it might be one or two more clicks here, David, to get to the next one. Let's try one more time. Uh, we've got a number of security accreditations uh, specific to media and entertainment. We've completed the MPAA self-certification. Those results are published in the member directory. Uh, many folks on this call might know that uh, the new security initiative in the media and entertainment industry is the Trusted Partner Network. Uh, Trusted Partner has started uh, doing security audits of production facilities uh, in 2018. Um, in the third quarter of 2019, they'll start doing uh, audits and certifications of cloud services, and we're registered for that. And then you see others here for uh, the healthcare industry, uh, federal law enforcement in the United States. Uh, we are GDPR certified as well. Next slide, please, David. Okay. And that this picks up on the uh, performance slide. There's a lot going on in this uh, in this slide here, but I'll try to summarize that. Um, Wasabi, at the core of it, we have a brand new purpose-built file system that leverages the the newest shingle magnetic recording disk drive technology. And unlike most storage services that are implemented on top of a Windows or Windows or a Linux environment. Um, we actually do not rely on any of those OSs. Wasabi takes direct control of the heads and the platters in the disk drives to pack data in ways that are very different from traditional storage vendors. So as a result, we're using more available disk space. Uh, we're laying out the bits in a more efficient manner, which gives us read and write speed advantage over the others. Um, on our website, we've got a performance benchmark report that you can download that'll show uh, compared to AWS S3, Amazon's top tier service, our write speeds are up to six times faster than AWS S3 and our, our read speeds are faster as well too. All this means that if you're doing a, a data restore, pulling content back in through ArcAware, you're gonna get it faster than you would with other services. Uh, next slide, please. And then a very important component here is what does this all cost? And as I mentioned earlier, Wasabi comes to the marketplace with a very simple to understand pricing model. Uh, our price is $5.99 per terabyte per month. That is our worldwide price for any of our data centers. And unlike other cloud storage services, we do not charge for data egress. We do not charge for API calls. It is literally one light item on your bill. That's the amount of storage that you consume. Uh, as a result, storing with Wasabi is something that's very predictable that you can budget for, and there are no unexpected surprises at the end of the month, and you don't pay a penalty when you have to pull your data back. Uh, over on the right-hand side is just an example here. Uh, if you're storing a petabyte of data with 20% data egress per year, you can see that with Wasabi, it doesn't matter how much the egress is, you're gonna be paying $73,000. With the other storage services, there's quite a delta, and that's all based on those egress charges. And then let's move on to the next one. So if you look at the media and entertainment industry, where we're being used is for backup and DR with uh, great partners like Archiware. Um, if you're archiving content with Wasabi, uh, it is truly an active archive. We are not a cold storage service. All of your data is immediately accessible. This is unlike Amazon's Glacier service as an example, where to retrieve a data item can take six or 12 hours or sometimes even longer. Uh, because of our high-speed performance, we're also used in production collaboration, uh, where geo-dispersed uh, production teams can access content and share content in the cloud. And we even serve as origin storage for video on demand playback services. So one more slide here to wrap it up from the Wasabi side. Um, you know, some of the benefits that we provide is that we free users from the costs and hassles of doing tape backup and tape archiving. We don't have the issues of recurring technology obsolescence where every six or seven years in the LTO world, you're needing to upgrade to new tape media, new hardware. 
Uh, there's no ongoing hardware maintenance the users have to worry about when they're using a cloud storage service like Wasabi. And then obviously you've got reduced costs in terms of the personnel, the space and the power and all that that goes along with running hardware on your own facility. Um, again, we offer a single tier of high performance storage. Uh, all content is immediately accessible. And by having that one price for only the storage you consume, it really takes the complexity out of storage management. Um, we have the flat free price, <laughs> the flat fee pricing. Um, again, no egress fees when you have to retrieve your content and pull it back to do a restore. So if you combine Archiware and Wasabi, we're helping media companies to reduce risk, to save money, and accelerate their pace of business. Thank you, All right, David. Cool. Turn it over. Okay. So um, I, th I think just to emphasize that the fact that you have the single tier of, of storage and no download egress costs makes it so easy to kind of budget for because the only figure that you need to have to figure out the cost is the amount of data that you're going to have in, in Wasabi. And then, and then you have all the information you need to arrive at a price. I think that when I was playing with the Wasabi storage, a couple of the things I noticed is that you have a, a one terabyte minimum billing. So you'll, you'll always pay a minimum of $599 for each month. Um, and you have a minimum of three month uh, charge for each object that's been stored. So that if I put a terabyte into Wasabi, I'll pay for that terabyte for three months, even if I delete it the next day. But I think, you know, even with even with that, the, the cost is still very attractive. Um, I'll just show you this part again. So under restore in my archive under archived images, I have two gigabytes worth of relatively small JPEG files here, which uh, you can see we generate previews for. This is paginated. So you're looking at 200 files here and then you can move on to the next page. There's about 10,000 here altogether and see all of those previews. If you do a search, then um, I think I searched for basket earlier. Then that reveals that particular basketball image. And then I could do, elect to just restore this file. This table up here tells me all the occasions when I actually archived this asset. Maybe I archived it several times. So I could choose the date of archive that I wanted to actually recover. And as far as restoring goes, if we just go back and say, um, go back to the top and say that we want to recover um, that entire folder of images, and we want to add that to our restore selection. So there's two gigs worth of data in that uh, folder and then we come in here and we say we want to restore that then p5 will figure out total amount of data two gigabytes 10,000 files and then I just need to click start and that uh, data will be being pulled back so our job monitor interface here allows us to see progress of that job and the copy volume chunks section that you can see at the bottom there is actually the section which is reporting back on those 64 megabyte chunks of data being pulled out of Wasabi. So you will see in here a kind of uh, a speed of uh, recovery. This is actually a, uh, you see it's going at 25 megabytes a second, but these are relatively small files. So with larger files, it would speed up. Um, but yeah, that's just a, a bit of a quick live demo for you. So whilst that's continuing to restore that data, I think it's done about one gig so far. Um, hopefully that was that was interesting content for everybody. I'm just going to look at the questions box now. Um, I think most of the people have been telling me about the live demo wasn't working. Um, and I think these questions are probably in order with the newest one at the bottom. So I'm flicking through. I don't see anybody asking me any questions other than why can't you see the screen? So um, if anybody's got anything they want to ask, then ask now. Otherwise, um, it's it's 35 minutes past the hour. So I think we're pretty much on schedule to wrap up. So last call for questions. Uh, and. If you think of a question afterwards, then you have our contact details. I'll make this video available via the usual YouTube link and we'll send that out to everybody that's subscribed. Uh, so I think all that remains at this point is to say thanks everybody for listening. Apologies again for the technical hiccup, all my fault. Thanks to Wit for joining us. Thanks, Wit. And, Thank you, uh, David. 
we'll see you on the next webinar. Thanks, everybody.